Happy Resurrection Day. The day has come to celebrate that he is not here. He is risen. He is risen. Welcome, happy morning, H2H shall say. <clears throat> Hell today is vanquished, heaven is won today. Lo, the dead is living, God forevermore. Him, their true creator, all his works adore. <clears throat> Welcome, happy morning, age to age shall say. Maker and redeemer, life and health of all. <clears throat> Thou from heaven beholding human nature's fall of the Father's Godhead, true and only Son, <clears throat> manhood to deliver, manhood didst put on. <clears throat> Welcome, happy morning, age to age, shall say <clears throat> excuse me for not having a great voice this morning <laughs> but a voice that is happy and a voice that's going to sing no matter what comes out okay so we are joyful on this resurrection day to know that the announcement has been made <clears throat> that when we died we have resurrection to look forward to. We will not be in that ground, in that dead body, but we will rise. Our spirits will rise and we will be with Jesus and he will give us a new heavenly body. <clears throat> My goodness, I'm sure that our heavenly bodies are absolutely beautiful. And I can't wait to see mine. And I, I don't think that you can put in measurements of what you would like. I think he's got it all figured out for us. <laughs> so on this March 9, March 9, we are reading from Numbers chapter 11, picking up with verse 24. <clears throat> and... Um, Miriam and Aaron get into a sin God does not like, and that's criticism. Gets in to criticism. And so <clears throat> the penalty is not nice, not pleasant to, not pleasant. So let's read, let's find out what all happened, this incredible history that is given to us from Numbers chapter 11, picking up with verse 24. <clears throat> picking up with 24. <clears throat> Let me see if I can clear it up here and read without any distraction. So Moshe, Moses went out and he told the people the words of the Lord and he gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people, and he placed them around the tabernacle. And then the Lord came down in the cloud. Can you imagine witnessing that? And spoke to him and took of the spirit that was upon him and placed the same spirit upon the 70 elders. And it happened when the Spirit rested upon them that they prophesied, although they never did so again. For these particular group of men, it was a one-time thing. But can you imagine <clears throat> how they treasured this experience? how they talked about it, how they reveled in what happened. Wow. But two men had remained in the camp. 
The name of one was Eldad, and the name of the other, Medad. And the Spirit rested upon them. Now they were among those who listed, but who had not gone out to the tabernacle. Yet they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moshe, Moses, and said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. So Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, one of his choice men, answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid them. <clears throat> and then Moses said to him, Are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. And here we are in this day and age when we can receive and be filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. And look at what Moses had to declare back then. It wasn't true then. Now a wind went out from the Lord and it brought quail from the sea and left them fluttering near the camp about a day's journey on this side and about a day's journey on the other side, all around the camp and about two cubits above the surface of the ground. I mean, they're on top of one another. And the people stayed up all that day, all night and all the next day and gathered the quail. He who gathered least gathered 10 homers, which we don't get homers. Let's just say they gathered a lot. And they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. But while the meat was still between their teeth, before it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was aroused against the people and the Lord struck the people with a very great plague. So he called the name of that place Kibroth Hatava, because there they buried the people who had yielded to craving. Ooh, let's pay attention to that. From Kibroth Hatava, the people moved to Hazarot and camped at Hazarot. And we move along to chapter 12 of Numbers. And then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. So they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. Imagine that. Isn't that incredible to be able to say the greatest leader but the most humble. Suddenly, the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, come out, you three, to the tabernacle of meeting. So the three came out. And then the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both went forward. <clears throat> and then he said, listen up now, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moshe, Moses, he is faithful 
in all my house. I speak with him face to face, even plainly and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So the anger of the Lord was aroused against them, and he departed. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous, as white as snow. And then Aaron turned toward Miriam, and there she was a leper. So Arian said to Moses, Oh, my Lord, please do not lay this sin on us in which we have done foolishly and in which we have sinned. Please do not let her be as one dead whose flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. So Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, Please, heal her. Oh, God, I pray. And then the Lord said to Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, would she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days, and afterward she may be received again. So Miriam was shut out of the camp seven days, and the people did not journey till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward, the people moved from Hatzorot and camped in the wilderness of Paran. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> we move right along to chapter 13. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel, from each tribe of their fathers. You shall send a man, every one a leader among them. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord, all of the men who were heads of the children of Israel. Now these were their names. <clears throat> From the tribe of Reuben, Shamoach, the son of Zachor. From the tribe of Simeon, Shepat, the son of Hori. From the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Yapnanach. From the tribe of Issachar, Ilgal, the son of Yosef. From the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshia, the son of Nun. From the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, the son of Raptu. From the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodi. From the tribe of Joseph, that is, from the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Susi. From the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gameli. From the tribe of Asher, Setor, the son of Michiel. From the tribe of Naphtali, Nabi, the son of Vushi. From the tribe of Gad, Geruelel, the son of Machi. Pardon me for any mispronunciation. These are the names of the men whom Moshe, Moses, sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Hoshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. <clears throat> and then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few 
or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not. Be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. So they went up. And they spied out the land from the wilderness of Tzin as far as Rehob, near the entrance of Hamath. And they went up through the south, and they came to Hebron, Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmi. The descendants of Anak were there. Those, remember those giants? Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan, in Egypt. And then they came to the valley of Echo, and there they cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the Valley of Echo because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there, and they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. And can you imagine if they had to carry that cluster on a pole between them? How big? How heavy? <clears throat> now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation, and they showed them the fruit of the land. And then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. And then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Anak came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. And we leave you on that little cliffhanger. You don't have to stay there. The whole point is you loving your Bible, getting into it, reading it. Go ahead. Go ahead and read on and see what happens. And then come back, Lord willing, tomorrow, and we'll all read it together again. And it'll have even more reading, more understanding, more we will glean from it, doing it a second time. Okay. Oh, my, wasn't that just exciting? <laughs> we move right along, and we are in the incredible gospel of Mark. Okay, the gospel of Mark. 
we are on chapter 14, picking up with verse 22. Mark 14, 22. And you'll notice here that Jesus doesn't necessarily bless the bread, but he blesses the creator of the bread. And as they were eating, <clears throat> Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many <clears throat> assuredly i say to you i will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when i drink it new in the kingdom of god and when they had sung a hymn they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, and we are quoting Zechariah chapter 13, verse 7, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. And Peter said to him, Even if all are made to stumble, yet I will not be. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you that today, even this night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he spoke more vehemently. If I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said likewise. And then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John with him. And he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. And then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. He went a little farther, and he fell on the ground, and he prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. And then he came, and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and he prayed and he spoke the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy and they did not know what to answer him. And then he came the third time 
And he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now his betrayer had given them a signal, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him and lead him away safely. As soon as he had come, immediately he went up to him and said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, and kissed him. And then they laid their hands on him and they took him. And one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And then Jesus answered and he said to them, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. And then they all forsook him and fled. Now a certain young man followed him having a linen cloth thrown around his naked body. And the young men laid hold of him. And he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. <clears throat> and even though today is Resurrection Day, Some call it Easter. That's where we are in the reading of the scriptures. And we will continue, Lord willing, tomorrow. All right, we move right along <clears throat> to Psalm 52. Psalm 52, this was given to the chief musician, and it's a contemplation of David when Doeg the Edomite went out and told Saul and said to him, David has gone to the house of Abimelech. Told on him, didn't he? Why do you boast in evil, O mighty man? The goodness of God endures continually. Your tongue devises destruction. Like a sharp razor working deceitfully. You love evil more than good. Lying rather than speaking righteousness. Selah. And all the Jews prostrated themselves and considered and went over these words. You love all devouring words, you deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy you forever. He shall take you away and pluck you out of your dwelling place and uproot you from the land of the living. Selah. The righteous also, also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him, saying, Here is the man who did not make God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But I am like a, 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 a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust 
in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise you forever because you have done it. And in the presence of your saints, I will wait on your name for it is good. That's quite a psalm. We wrap up today's reading with Proverbs, Mishle, chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. Proverbs 11, 1 through 3. Oh, Connie's got her Bible. She's right on it today. Thank you, Connie. Thank you, Melissa, for bringing Kathy's graphics. Thank you, Kathy, for such beautiful, beautiful graphics. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Please go and visit and enjoy and then share them. Share them out. You never know when just the right picture or, or the right word will be what will bring another heart to the Lord. It's just one more way of witnessing. All right, let's get on with Proverbs 11. Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. Wisdom is what we need. The integrity of the upright will guide them. But the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. And I'm sure you know people that that's what happened to them. Some kind of a perversion destroyed them. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your precious Wonderful word today. So rich, so filling. Holy Spirit, please guide us. Guide us with this precious word of God. Let's all pray. Father God, we are so grateful for your word. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for the wisdom. We thank you for the history. We thank you for all the examples that we can learn from them. We can learn how to do things righteously. And we can learn how not to fall into temptation and sin. Precious God, your word is a lamp. It's a guide to our feet, a guide to our eyes and our ears and our hands, a guide to our minds. And we bless you for it on this day. We celebrate today, Lord. We celebrate that you conquered death, the last enemy. You conquered death for yourself and for us. And now we do not fear death, knowing that our spirits will live, that our body can be killed and destroyed. But not us, not the real person, not the spirit, the personality, not the history of the life. All of that will go with us. And God's intent is to give us a brand new body for eternity. Oh, Father God, your plan is so beautiful, so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus for all of that beating and bleeding and suffering and mocking and scourging and spitting and all of that hatred, how you conquered all of Satan's attempts. You defeated him totally, once and for all. And now we are free from his clutches. We can come to you. We can live in you. We can be filled with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, 
for coming. Thank you so much. We celebrate today, Lord. We are going to sing praises and we are going to enjoy fellowship with friends and family. We are going to draw together and praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day to cry. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is not here in that tomb. He is risen. And he has gathered all of the saints of old, all who die in him. Go up there with the Lord. Praise the Lord. We will not suffer in the judgment because of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a future. What a future you laid out for everyone who would come and repent and believe in you, Lord. Oh, we praise your name. Please let this day be the day that you say a little prayer and you repent of your sins and you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Please, he is your ticket to heaven. Please, don't put it off. Don't put it off for any reason. It doesn't take long, a simple prayer of repentance and receiving the Lord. And I pray that y'all fill up every pew of every church. Go and join in and worship and let the body of Christ be strengthened with your tithes and offerings, your presence, your joy, your gladness. Bless the church staff of people, the priests, the pastors, the elders, who are faithful. Oh, Father God, we want to thank you for Israel. We want to thank you that we have lived to see you gather your people and you have caused it to be a nation once again, recognized by the world. Father God, thank you that you are bringing your people home. It's a nation that is growing and Lord, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, that peace will be there, that the IDF will be protected by your very presence, your very covering, and that any evil would be apprehended immediately and tended to. That peace will dwell in the streets of Jerusalem. Bless, Lord, all who are celebrating there today, all who have been celebrating Passover for, for a few days now. Bless them, Lord. Bless all of the visitors to Israel at this time. Let it be, Lord, the time of their life to be there and see where you walked and, and experience all the places. Let their Bibles now come alive to them that their eyes have seen their ears have heard. We give you praise and glory. Father God, I'd ask that every church in every language in every country be filled today with praise and worship. I'd ask you would bind the hand of the enemy from interfering in any way in people's worship as they adore their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah. And Lord, we declare today we are looking up. We are gloriously waiting for your second coming. Oh, how it will be. You won't be this little baby that needs to grow up into a man. But you will burst the skies. You will burst through in the most glorious cloud I'm sure the Lord has ever made. He's got a special one that you will come in and you will come for us. Oh, we have everything to look forward to, Lord. 
it dims all of the junk from this world down to just nothing. Tiny. Father God, we'd ask that many would come to you today. Across this earth, many would come to you today and give themselves totally to you to live every day, every breath of the rest of their lives for you, for you. And all of God's people went ahead with the prayers for who they want to pray for the situations they want to pray for. And Lord, I set myself in agreement with them. I am, I am excited that you will hear their prayers. You will answer them in many ways. And we give you thanks for that, even before we see it. All of God's people, cry a hearty amen. Have a beautiful, beautiful day in the Lord and with family and friends. I love you so much. Bye-bye.